Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Victor Quintana and in today's video we are going to be going over my 2021 what's in my Pelican case. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so first and foremost Obviously, we have the Leica SL2, and that is our main camera body that we take with us all the time. Second, we have the Leica SL24-90. This is my all-around go-to lens. Pretty much use this for almost everything. So next up is the Leica SL 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Now this lens I don't use too often, but I do like to keep it with me uh, just because it does give me that really wide at 16. And the other cool thing is that it's an internal zoom, unlike the 24 to 90, which is an external zoom. So when I am mounting it on my gimbal, the weight doesn't really change when I need to zoom whether I need a wide wide lens or if I zoom it into 35 the weight is the same so I don't have to adjust it as much so that's that's kind of a nice feature using this lens next up we have my Panasonic 42.5 prime lens designed by Leica now this thing is awesome because it actually converts to a about an 80 385 and change uh, when I put it onto my GH5, which I actually really enjoy using for interview style videos, uh, for portrait videos. This thing is super crisp, and I like the fact that it has an aperture ring that I can adjust as well. This lens is a must have if you're shooting on micro four thirds. Highly suggested. Now the next lens that I also take with me, I uh, can't show you, I'll show you in some, I'll add in this B-roll here, but it's the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter lens. And that is basically the lens that stays on my GH5 at all times. Uh, it's such a wide range and it's really nice to just have that really small lens with you it doesn't make your camera a huge uh, footprint so i really enjoy using that lens with my gh5 now also going off of that tangent throwing in some b-roll of my gh5 because i do bring that with me as well as my backup camera now those are typically the main big items i would say that go into my pelican case so now let me show you a little bit of the smaller more i guess niche items that I take with me. I don't know if that's the right word to use there, but we're moving on. Ray cards. I cannot tell you how useful these are, especially when you're shooting video. It is so nice being able to get your white balance correct right in camera for any scene. You just hold this in front of your subject and you set your white balance and boom, you're good to go. And you know, they're super thin and small, so it's not like they take up a lot of space. The next two items kind of go hand in hand. Uh, this is a hot shoe. Well, technically it's for a cold shoe mount, but I put it in my hot shoe mount on my Leica SL. And then I have this small rig mount to attach my Atomos Ninja 5. Uh, so typically if I'm running and gunning, uh, not having to use a gimbal or like a big setup or anything, I will use this top handle in combination with this small rig hot shoe mount or cold shoe mount and I'll throw on my Atomos Ninja here with just a small short HDMI plug and and bada bing bada boom tighten it down and we're shooting video on the Leica SL2 obviously I can't show you my Atomos Ninja because I am using it to record right now but a little b-roll will be inserted all right next up is the thinner peak design camera strap. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I actually don't really use camera straps that often. But what I have found is that I have been using them when I'm shooting video handheld. Uh, mainly because it gives me another point of contact on being able to balance the camera. So I'll put the strap around my neck, tuck my elbows in, and it's kind of like 
another point of contact that keeps the camera pretty steady. So I've started to use camera straps, guys. Also, I mean, just for safety reasons, I've seen people drop their cameras, thankfully. Not how would I have not, but you never know. All right, so these might seem a little insignificant, but these dice wipes, these are phenomenal. I don't typically carry a lens cloth with me, although I should, uh, but these are really great because I do find myself in different elements sometimes, especially around salt water. So being able to wipe all that away from a lens or from a camera or from my phone or really from any piece of equipment, these things are great and they're fairly cheap. It, you can get like a 200 pack of them from Amazon. I'll put a link down below uh, for like 18, 20 bucks or something like that. I want to, I want to say I could be wrong, but these I highly recommend. Next up, ND filters. So we have a plethora of filters here. That is for the Panasonic 42.5. This is for the Panasonic 12 to 35. This is for the Leica SL lenses, the 24-90, the 16-35, and the 90-280. They're all a diameter of 82 millimeters. So this one fits all three. We have a protective UV, a ND filter for a 73 millimeter lens. And I actually was using this filter specifically when I was using some Panasonic lenses. Um, I remember I bought it and I was gonna return it. I ended up ju just keeping it. And this is my last filter, which is a variable ND filter for the Leica lenses as well. So I typically carry these three, uh, these three. <laughs> there are clearly one, two, three, four, five, six. My kindergarten teacher would be very disappointed in me right now. There are six ND filters. This is the only one that I really don't ever use because I don't have um, a Panasonic lens anymore with a 77 millimeter uh, diameter. But for the most part, these five I use pretty regularly. Next up, we are talking batteries. So a plethora of SL2 batteries and a handful of GH5 batteries. Those are always coming with me no matter what. But on top of batteries for the camera, I also bring a portable charger for my iPhone or for the client's iPhone or the model's iPhone. It's always very important to have these power banks because nowadays with how much we're using our phones, the battery drains pretty quickly. And if you're on set and you have one of these power banks, trust me, you're going to be a very popular guy and make your client and or subject very happy that you have one of these. So. Highly suggested, and this one specifically is made by Anchor. There are plenty of different brands out there, but I've just found that all the Anchor products that I use as far as like power banks and whatnot have worked substantially for me and have worked awesome during like hurricanes here in Florida and whatnot when we've lost power. So I've just stuck with what I know works, Anchor. And along with that, always have iPhone cables because you can have a power bank and not have any thing, any cables to charge it and it then it's just worthless. So definitely remember these. Now this is a card and I cannot tell you what card is underneath all this grip tape. I completely forgot. Uh, I made this so long ago, but a buddy of mine uh, by the name of Joey Wright and you can check out his work uh, through the link here. He was the first one to tell me about this and basically they're just different strips of grip tape, different sizes, all folded up and taped up here that you can use in case of an emergency. So I always keep this in my bag. You never know what you need to tape down and the, the stickiness actually stays very sticky uh, even, even though it's been, you know, stuck to this card for I don't know how many years, but it's come in handy a couple of times. Thankfully, I haven't had to use it too many times, but the few times I've had, it's come in very handy. So highly suggest creating one of these little things. Next up is my Joby Gorillapod. Uh, as you can see, I am missing um, some of the some of the last couple beads for this one leg. Uh, they 
just fell out at some point and was never able to track them down, but the tripod still works great. I mainly use this for BTS uh, filming with my iPhone or doing a time-lapse filming. Uh, I always bring this with me just because you can, you know, put it around any sort of tree, fence, post, uh, prop it up somewhere. It's got countless ways of how to use it. And I always like taking BTS video because I like using them for my reels and TikToks and now YouTube shorts. I'm getting into that, so stay tuned for the, more of those but highly recommend one of these. Now, another item that I recently started adding to my pack is this Nanlite. Uh, this thing is awesome. I love the amount of power that this can give off. Hopefully I can show you without actually blinding you. Uh, whoa. Hey, I mean, it's pretty good light and you can change them to be different colors. Up that saturation. And as you can see, you got all your colors. You can go through blues, greens, purples, pink, um, red. It's it's really just an awesome tool. And uh, they charge pretty quickly, give us a good amount of light. And the cool thing about it is that on this bottom plate here, this is actually magnetic. So if you have any sort of strong metal around on set or anything like that, you can actually just like prop this up to it and it will hold pretty well. Uh, I actually have two of these and I really enjoy them. I used to use loom cubes. I never really loved them. Uh, didn't They were just kind of a pain to use the original ones. I haven't tried any of the new ones, but the original little square ones, they've gone complete kaputs on me. So I gave up on those and invested in these nan lights, which I would highly recommend as well. All right, so next, up is uh, my Think Tank SD memory card slot bag, enough to do nine cards. But I, I really enjoy this just because it helps me keep my cards organized. And I like this specifically more than some of the hard cases, just because this seems to be a little bit uh, slimmer than some of the hard cases that I've seen. But that's just really personal preference. So never leave home without SD cards. Now, a couple of smaller knickknacks here that I have. Uh, these are just a couple of extra tripod screws, uh, Allen key, another quick release plate for my DJI RS2 gimbal. I usually keep these in my pack at all times. You never know when you're gonna need them. It's always good to just have some spare tools around just in case you never know when you're gonna need it. Now, a couple other things that I put in my pack, which I'll show with some B-roll here uh, is my Rode mic, which I typically plug in whenever I'm shooting any sort of video. Only if I'm recording to the SD card though, because it's not a self-powered mic, it cannot record audio to my recording monitor. I would have to use my other Sino mic. Sino, 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 Sino. I use that mic with my recording monitor though because it is self-powered, so it does record audio to the monitor. So that's something to keep in mind. If you've never come across that issue, just keep that in mind. Learn from my mistakes, because I once recorded a video and there was just completely no sound recorded whatsoever, and it was because I was using the Rode mic. It's not self-powered instead of my Sennel mic, which is self-powered. So it makes a big difference. Now, the other thing I put into my pack that I only typically take with me on certain jobs, doesn't stay in there the whole time, is my DJI Mavic Air. This little guy has been awesome. I've only crashed it once, thankfully, knock on wood, and I really just had to replace one of the propellers, but it's kind of the perfect size for what I need. The only downside to having one of these older drones for a prolonged period of time after it's been discontinued is the fact that you no longer can buy the batteries for them, brand new, which right now I have three batteries. I would love to have at least two more, but you know, they stop supporting these older models once the new ones come out. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, when I do bring the drone with me, I also bring my ND filters I have for the drone. Uh, in this little case, which has space to hold nine ND filters, kindergarten math again, and it keeps them nice and organized. So I always bring this along as well. And you can't use a drone without 
the drone controller. So we've kind of gone over pretty much, I think, everything that I've put in my uh, Pelican case. I'm going to start assembling and putting everything together and uh, see how it goes. So that's a lot of gear to take with you on every shoot, I know. But it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed making it. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I'll get to them as quickly and as accurately as I possibly can. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really goes a long way. And if you're interested in this type of content, definitely think about subscribing. It's just that red little button down there to your left. And I am looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. My name is Victor Quintana and until next time.